Go to my end of the world, New Haven, Connecticut, where we'll talk about this guy. Raymond Maresca, Maresca, a.k.a. Lemons. He was a longtime gangster in New Haven, Connecticut, where he was born on January 19, 1903. His game was selling drugs, running numbers, loan sharking, and retail theft. He really liked retail theft. That was his chosen area. He was associated with the Lucchese crime family through the Lucchese Capo Carmine, Willie the Wap, Lucasio. Why would you want to be known as Willie the Wap? <laughs> Marquesio's criminal record began in 1923. It included arrests for drug dealing. He was a big-time drug dealer. It was, it was probably his main source of income. Armed robbery, mostly retail stores, and the occasional card game. He'd rob that. Uh, a drug deal gone wrong landed him in the Atlanta Federal Pen at one point. After his release from prison, he ran a hold-up gang, but physically he just disassociated. He wasn't in it. He would plan the jobs, uh, but wouldn't go on them. So he concentrated then on loan sharking. In 1951, federal agents arrested Lemons in New Haven after he dealt $1,500 worth of heroin. It's a lot more money now than it is, than it is now uh, in 1951. Worth of heroin and stolen guns to an undercover agent during an investigation. He was sent to prison again. This was around 1970. In December 6, 1972, detectives watched Lemons taking bets over the phone and writing on a piece of paper. They were watching through the window and writing on a piece of paper while his wife, Canetta, examined the papers that he wrote and then filed them. Detectives walked up. They knocked on the window. They showed him this badge. They showed uh, a search warrant. Lemons and his wife, they grabbed all the bedding slips. They ran into the bathroom. They started flushing the evidence down into the toilets. Detectives kicked in the door. They had to kick in the bathroom door. They wrestled in the little teeny bathroom there. They got most of the stuff out of the toilet, and they had to go to court again. Lemons died in uh, 1980 of natural causes. Willie the Wap Conforti, an alleged member of the Gambino crime family, is reported again and again as being his brother, Lemon's brother. Um, I, they're both from New Haven. They're both about the same age. Both dealt drugs. But I, I checked uh, on Ancestry, everywhere else I could. There's no blood relation. They're not in-laws or not. So I don't know. I think that's something that's started and stuck. But who knows, maybe some other way they were brothers. There's another Maresca over in Italy. Uh, she's a convicted murderer, a mafia boss, uh, Sunta Maresca. She's better known as Pupita Maresca, the Lady Camorra, who died in her, in her home in uh, Castellamare di Stabia. She was 86 years old. This is in 2021. Mascara was a tiny woman, but she had enormous charisma and great looks. She was looked, nicknamed Popita, the little doll. She was a beauty contest winner. At age 18, she made headlines when she murdered the man who killed her husband, Pasquale Simonetti, who was a smuggler, like, like her father. He was a smuggler. She killed the man in broad daylight as an act of revenge. She was six months pregnant at the time. In court, she said, I would do it again in a heartbeat in the hold courtroom stood up and screamed and cheered for her. So Simonetti had quarreled, her husband, had quarreled with some other uh, Camorra guy. On July 16, 1955, he was shot dead in the central square of Naples by Gattanio Orlando. Uh, Orlando, a hitman commissioned by rival uh, Camorra guy Antonio Esposito. So on August 4, 1955, she drove to Naples with her younger brother, Ciro, uh, when they met Esposito to talk about something, she reached into her handbag, pulled out a Smith & Wesson 38, held it with both hands, and opened fire, firing 29 bullets into him, into Esposito, killing him, obviously. Anyway, she was sentenced to 18 years in prison, later reduced to 13 years and 14 months. She gave birth to her first child, Pascal, in prison. She was pardoned in 1965. The Mascara family was known as lightning knives for their expert use of switchblades, and they made their money in contraband cigarettes. Her father, Alberto Maresca, was a dangerous smuggler, uh, was a dangerous guy and a smuggler. Her uncle, Vincenzo Maresca, was a Camaro boss. He murdered his own brother, Geraldo. Uh, she became a lover of another Camaro boss, a drug baron, 
Umberto and Marturo, uh, and gave birth to twins. In 1974, her son Pasquale, he was then 18, her first boy, was abducted and murdered. His death is still a mystery, you know, legally, but it's unsolved. Maresca believed with all of her heart that her, her husband was responsible because he and Pasquale, they never, Pasquale never accepted this guy as his father. He never respected him. He was outwardly disrespectful. And the husband, Amaratoro, threatened him several times. He said, point blank, I will kill you someday. So there's your first hint. Maresca separated from her husband, obviously, in 1982. But she continued her involvement in the underworld with the Camorra. In February 1982, there was this war between the Nuvo Camaro Organizaciata and the Nuvo Family. <laughs> family. I, I don't know how to say that. Nuvo Camaro boss Rafael Cotudo had a, imposed a tax on every case of smuggled cigarettes, a measure the Marqueses just resisted. They weren't going to pay it. Um, in this fight, Marquesi's brother, Ciro, was shot and killed, uh, was shot rather, I'm sorry, in 1970, he did survive. Marquesi used publicity. She was, uh, because she was beautiful, everyone, the newspaper people were all over her, but she used publicity as a weapon to protect herself. Um, she was just really so well known and so pretty and had so much attention. Her, uh, her rivals were a little reluctant to, to do her too much harm because then the reporters would come and look for them. So it, that stunt, that publicity thing, kept tension away from the rest of her, her gangsters. And in the midst of a war, she actually held a press conference to defend her men who were running around shooting up the streets. So after the notorious serial killer Rafael Cutolo launched a new criminal organization to take over the traditional Camorra families in 1982, she called another press conference and she denounced him as a power-crazed madman. So that sort of thing, even in Italy, where the mafia was running rampant at the time, it was just astonishing. People just couldn't believe that she and did that. And the press went wild. So anyway, she died in her home after a long, long career in organizing.